Denise Wilson saw a small figure emerge from the shadows, and it immediately triggered alarm bells. A camera recorded everything that happened next, and once it was shared online, the reaction was remarkable. People were calling her a hero. Wilson is a bus driver from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, with an amazing story. Strangers online have hailed her as a hero for something remarkable that she did during one of her night shifts. It all started on a cold evening at the beginning of 2017. It was January and the weather was bitter. In fact, temperatures were in the region of only 26 degrees, Fahrenheit a night that would have been best spent inside a warm and cozy house. But not everyone was tucked up safely that night. As the night shift went on, Wilson decided to take a break at around midnight. But while she was stopped something bizarre happened. Wilson witnessed something that night that she never expected to see, and she knew that she had to act fast. Wilson first noticed a figure running up Center Street, but it wasn't the silhouette of an adult. Rather the bus driver realized that she was looking at a child. Given that it was past midnight, Wilson couldn't understand why a kid would be out alone and in the cold. Am I really seeing what I'm seeing? Wilson thought to herself. She noticed too that the child was wearing pajamas, only a pair of shorts, a t-shirt, and no shoes. Something about the situation didn't seem right at all. Then Wilson heard the kid crying. That's when the bus driver knew that she had to help the little boy. Wilson jumped off the bus to go and speak to the child. First, she asked where his mom and dad were, and what his name was, hoping to get some answers that could help her to safely return him home. Unsurprisingly, the little boy was freezing cold. To stop him from shivering on the street, Wilson put her coat around him and lead him to a gas station. To start with, she bought him something to snack on, and then another member of the public donated his sweater to the child. After that, CCTV images from Wilson's bust show her bringing the lost boy back on board, wrapped in the oversized clothes. She immediately closed the doors to the bus, most likely in order to keep the bitterly cold air out in an attempt to keep the boy warm. The video shows the little boy finding a seat near the front of the bus, while Wilson resumes her position in the driver's seat. She is heard asking the child if he is okay, before asking still a little cold. After that, Wilson reaches behind her seat and grabs yet another sweater for him to wear. By that point, Wilson knew that she wasn't going back to work, so she officially ended her shift there. The police were on their way by now, so she thought it would be better to keep the boy company until officers arrived to deal with the unusual situation. But the little boy, who turned out to be only five years old, was exhausted. He ate his snack and fell asleep, even before the police arrived, recalled Wilson. Once officers arrived, they were able to investigate why the young child had ended up on the street. It turned out that the young boy had simply wandered away from home that cold night, according to a statement released by Milwaukee County Transit System. Other reports say that a miscommunication among family members led to the child going missing. Whatever happened, the main thing is that the boy was found safe and well, albeit a little cold. And all credit went to Wilson who first spotted him wandering the streets alone. Milwaukee County Transit System even praised the driver for her actions in an online statement. Wilson, who had only been driving buses around Milwaukee for six months, was publicly praised by her employer for making sure a scary situation didn't go from bad to worse. She kept a cool head, despite finding the scenario shocking and a little frightening herself. People online were also quick to congratulate Wilson on her quick thinking. Underneath a Daily Mail story about the incident, someone wrote, Thank you, Denise. A great portion of heaven awaits you. While another said, God bless that lady. At the same time though, some people weren't impressed with the young boy's parents. If you have a toddler, lock the doors and put a child lock around the handle. Why is it so hard? Somebody wrote. But others defended the family by pointing out that a five-year-old child would be capable of undoing it. After police got to the bottom of the story, 
The boy's family was not subjected to an investigation by Child Protection Services, though. Thankfully, the unfortunate situation was resolved, and Wilson emerged as a total hero from it. But Wilson doesn't see it like that. I'm a child of God, and a lot of times we try to do what's right when we see something happening, and if we're there to help and have the ability or means to do it, that's what we're supposed to do," she said. So I don't look at it as being a hero, just being there to help," Wilson continued. But plenty of people would disagree. Let's just hope that Wilson is working the night shift the next time a young child decides to wander away from home at night. This story was really incredible, but you will like the next one more. The assistant principal always drove this boy to school and helped him reach a major milestone. At first, assistant principal Kenneth Lanier thought Gabrielle Miles was a class clown. But after talking to the student's mom, he realized that Miles needed help, and he vowed to be the one to give it to him. Then, after driving Miles to school every day, Lanier watched him do something the boy's family have never witnessed before. Teachers frequently choose their profession in order to help students reach their full potential. And yet that MO often starts and ends at the school grounds. However, when Lanier, the assistant principal of Northeast High School in Macon, Georgia, learned a student had problems, he made it his mission to help. Lanier remembered his first encounter with Miles. As he recalled in a blog on Love What Matters, it was my first day as assistant principal. A young man approached me and saluted. He asked me, sir, were you ever in the military? I responded, no, and continued to move around the cafeteria, monitoring other students. As the assistant principal finished his circuit of the cafeteria, he returned to where Miles was seated. When the student asked Lanier again if he had ever been in the military, another teacher intervened, suggesting Miles leave the man alone. Lanier, however, believed the student was messing around and would soon be visiting his office. At the start of the academic year, Lanier would often observe Miles dashing from class to class as if desperate not to be late. But as fall and winter rolled around, no longer did he spot the young man in the cafeteria. He began to wonder where this endearing student offering regular salutes had gone. But then as summer approached, Lanier was offered administration duties on Northeast High's Summer Opportunity School. The assistant principal was perhaps a little surprised when he learned that Miles had enrolled in the program. He realized then that he couldn't get away from the quirky student's attention. But Miles didn't show up to summer classes. However, it wasn't long before Lanier learned why. The young boy's mom called the assistant principal to explain her son's absence. The family had moved to a new house, meaning the school was no longer in walking distance for her son. And to add to the student's problems, they were no longer on the school bus route. With transit proving difficult, Miles had to rely on the help of his family. It was a situation that took away any motivation the student had of getting to school. Lanier knew that Miles had to attend summer opportunity school the next day. And so, the educator came up with a solution. Having observed Miles around school, Lanier recognized that he had the application to do well academically. It was simply a seemingly impossible situation that was dragging the student down. As the assistant principal told Georgia's WMAZ News in May 2018, he had the drive. He just had an obstacle in his way, and that was transportation. As educators, we oftentimes say we really want to help children Lanier explained in the Love What Matters blog. But many times, that stops at the school doors. However, in this moment, I felt it to be my calling to help Gabrielle. The assistant principal would be there the next morning to drive Miles to school himself. During their carpools to and from school each day, Lanier learned a lot about the talkative student. Miles would describe in great detail everything that he had gone through in life. His family appeared to move around a lot and had lived in a hotel in the past. The troubled young man also once served time in a detention center. The more the educator learned about young Miles, however, the more he realized they had absolutely nothing in common. Nevertheless, the assistant principal felt drawn to the young man. Could it simply be that with a mother who couldn't drive and a father busy at work, like Miles, the Lanier often lacked a reliable ride in his youth? 
But there was one thing that was patently clear. Miles was determined to graduate. In fact, he would be the first person in his family to do so. And Lanier had grown so fond of his student thanks to their car rides that he made a decision. The assistant principal was going to do all he could to help the young man reach his goal. As Lanier described, it was clear to me that helping Miles meant more than encouragement and or discipline when needed. It meant I had to extend myself further than anticipated, but I made a commitment to him. If he did all he could, then I would do all I could to help him. Not only did Lanier commit to driving Miles to school and home again every day, his help extended further. Understanding the student had difficulties at home, he offered a little financial help when needed. And when he was away for training for a few days, the assistant principal made arrangements so Miles could still get to school. While Lanier was away, he had a revelation. When asked to select an inspirational quote, he chose Nelson Mandela's, do not judge me by my successes. Judge me by how many times I fell down and got back up again. And when asked to name a student who inspired him, without hesitation, he chose Miles. As Lanier recalled, after returning from the trip, I shared with Miles what I had committed to. His response to me was, you really want me to graduate? I responded with, you are going to graduate. I will pick you up at 6.15 a.m. every morning and be on time. You are going to school if I have to come in the house and drag you out. Although Miles thought the situation was funny, he knew the assistant principal was serious. And it was through Lanier's confidence in him that the student found the determination to break the cycle. A year after the teacher's commitment, their car ride was headed to a graduation ceremony. Miles was excited about graduation. Lanier described on Love What Matters. But he's especially excited about being the first person in his family to graduate from high school. Indeed, the assistant principal wasn't the only person inspired by the young man's achievements despite his difficulties. I'm excited about how Miles has overcome adversities and worked extremely hard, even on Saturdays, to reach this milestone in his life," Lanier explained. To top it off, I received a call from the executive director for student affairs of the local technical college inviting Miles, his parents and I for a visit. I am extremely proud of him.